Okay. Good afternoon. We should be starting shortly. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Mudia Himakumani. I am a researcher with the UN Institute for Disarmament Research, UNIDIR. Um, and I would like to first start by welcoming you all to this event, Ambassador, um, other heads of mission, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good time of day, because we've got a huge um, following online, people who are who connected virtually, um, all protocol observed. I would like to thank the Australian mission for collaborating with UNIDIR on convening this event on launching the National Survey of Implementation. And I'd also like to extend my thanks to Ms. Bryony Daly Whitworth, Director, Cyber and Tech, Multilateral Engagement for the continued support for UNIDIR in this regard. You have heard a lot about the UNIDIR Cyber Policy Portal, not just today, but also during the December session of the Open Ended Working Group. And we are so appreciative of all the mentions and the continued support from all our sponsors as well as good friends. Today's event will further show how the Cyber Policy Portal adds value to the current discussions in the Open Ended Working Group through the launch of the survey. As you may have heard this morning with the support of many co-sponsors and I am not doing this by myself today. Um, I will now hand over to Ambassador Mitch Fifield, Australia's permanent representative and ambassador to the UN to deliver some opening remarks. Well, thank you so much, uh, Bonahi, and uh, welcome everyone to the Australian mission. It's just wonderful to uh, to be in person with uh, so many people after so long. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for uh, for being here. Um, and also uh, to those who uh, are online, uh, thank you indeed for, for joining us. Uh, we know you're, you're with us in spirit. Well, it's uh, great to be gathered for the launch of, now I have to take a deep breath as I say this, for the launch of the National Survey of Implementation of United Nations Recommendations on Responsible Use of ICTs by States in the Context of International Security. Now, that doesn't readily roll off the tongue, but I guess what it, uh, what it lacks uh, in, uh, in brevity, uh, it makes up for in comprehensiveness. Uh, so, uh, for the purposes of uh, this exercise, let's refer to it as the survey. Uh, but uh, we're very uh, pleased uh, to be uh, here in partnership with you uh, and uh, Unity. So thank you so much. And uh, I guess as we uh, all know, uh, the international community does have uh, a clear expectation that states adhere to a framework of commitments on uh, responsible state behaviour in cyberspace. It's why we're here. And these commitments uh, have been developed, they've been endorsed, uh, they've been reaffirmed by the UN and include the application of existing international law in cyberspace, uh, 11 agreed norms of responsible state behaviour and confidence building measures, all of which uh, is to be supported by coordinated and effective capacity building. Now, a core part of putting these commitments into practice is uh, sharing experiences uh, and the best ways of doing things, as well as uh, assessing our own progress on implementation. So in uh, 2021, uh, the Cyber Open-Ended Working Group and the Cyber Group of Governmental Experts recommended that states on a voluntary basis uh, survey their national efforts to implement norms uh, develop and share experience and good practice on norms implementation and compile and streamline the information that they present using tools like this survey. Uh, it also encourages states to use the survey to assess their own priorities, needs and resources uh, and to share information on lessons learnt uh, to further strengthen international cooperation and assistance in ICT security and capacity building. And uh, we'd very much uh, like to acknowledge uh, the work of Mexico uh, and Isaac uh, Morales in particular for originally proposing this survey, as well as uh, the proposal's co-sponsors, uh, Argentina, 
uh, Canada, Chile, Denmark, Estonia, France, uh, Indonesia, Kenya, uh, Mexico, uh, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Poland, South Africa, and the Pacific Island Forum. So thank you so much to all the co-sponsors. Uh, We've uh, worked alongside Mexico and other partners to uh, develop the survey, uh, including uh, Unity, uh, to uh, provide an online platform through the Unity Cyber Policy Portal so that states can easily self-assess progress towards implementation of the framework of responsible uh, state behaviour in cyberspace. Now, surveying implementation through self-assessment does help to identify and establish a baseline of implementation to date, uh, gaps in implementation, and also barriers to implementation. If we do that, uh, we're then able to take steps to overcome those barriers and to fill those gaps, uh, including uh, by developing targeted cooperation and capacity building programs. So uh, we're very pleased uh, to be here today to launch this uh, important online platform. Uh, we uh, firmly believe that this initiative is a really practical means of actioning uh, the recommendations of our collective efforts in the UN uh, and uh, very much look forward to uh, Unity's presentation of the online platform today. Uh, and uh, my, my apologies, but I do need to leave shortly to uh, head to a meeting at another mission. But thank you so much. Uh, and um, over to you. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for those. And may I just also add for our participants in the room as well as online that this event is being recorded. Um, and with that, um, we will be receiving remarks from um, Isaac Morales, General Coordinator of Multidimensional Security, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. Isaac is joining us virtually. And I'll now ask my colleagues to please let Isaac deliver his remarks. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Isaac, loud and clear. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have to say that I really miss uh, being being right there and joining you in this relevant event. Um, I'm really, really honored by participating in this, um, this event, this launching event, uh, on behalf of the government of Mexico. Um, I want uh, first to sincerely thank and to recognize the leadership of Australia to make this very cyber idea a reality. Um, particularly, uh, I want to thank and to express all my gratitude to Toby, uh, Bryony, and all the cyber team uh, from Australia. Um, I also want uh, to recognize uh, the efforts of Unidir uh, to launching uh, this, as I said, very cyber idea that now will, will be a reality. Um, I want to, to, to say um, that collaboration and joint efforts uh, with the event today are key evidences uh, on how we can together improve confidence, transparency, and security and stability in cyberspace. Um, in coincidence uh, with uh, uh, Ambassador uh, of Australia and, and, and what all we have heard during these days. Uh, for Mexico, our discussions at the UN level right now, and particularly within the open and working group, will not be a uh, one more group uh, to only prolong uh, discussions, well-known discussions, but a kind of implementation-oriented mechanism dedicated to put into practice what we now have from both the open-ended working group and the GGE reports as a framework, a general framework. And that is to say that the survey that today is, um, is, is launched by uh, Unidir in this uh, cyber platform uh, will contribute indeed to the implementation of the norms and 
um, the relevance of other recommendations that put it together present to us this very um, uh, relevant framework, UN framework. Um, we will then um, emphasize the importance of hearing from others. And we believe that others experience through a, a reporting uh, mechanism such as this um, survey will allow us to identify gaps and to, then to, to detonate more tailor-made capacity building programs. Also, regional advancements, as we, as we have heard with, uh, during the open-ended working group discussions, will put relevance to our messages on how we are doing with implementation and what obstacles also we face in these efforts to implement. It is important to emphasize the opportunity to say that we cannot do something in order then to direct better this all um, 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 uh, efforts of capacity building. Um, finally, I, I just want to emphasize uh, three elements that uh, for the government of Mexico and myself um, uh, will, will be adding this survey to our discussions in a more formal way. First, we will have a really put into practice capa uh, uh, confidence building measure. When reporting voluntarily, we will be presenting some elements of transparency and some elements of our efforts at policy level and strategies. Then we will have face-to-face -face a capacity building put into practice. The second, inclusivity. This, this, is, this, is, this is a survey um, uh, which goal is everybody, each country to participate. Um, then we will have many levels of compromise, many levels of, of reporting, but that is also inclusivity. Um, I want to also say that multi-stakeholder community will also contribute and can contribute efforts of member states to put into practice all these international commitments. And finally, flexibility. We are having in front of us with this launching the opportunity also through this survey to address new challenges and concerns, not only what we already had, but possibly to see what we can later in our discussions. This flexibility, it's also important for us in our um, uh, vivid uh, discussions. Thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Isaac, for those remarks. We wish you were here physically with us, but Greetings from Mexico again. Um, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, we are going to now be receiving the presentation from UNIDIR on the overview and demonstration of the online survey tool. And to do that, we are joined by head of program for the security and technology program, Dr. Giacomo Pesci Pauli, and associate project coordinator, Ms. Lenka Filipova. Over to you guys. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mulyahi, for uh, the introduction. And uh, just a couple of words while my colleagues are, are loading the presentation in the background. Uh, I just would like to, to echo uh, Mulyahi's uh, uh, opening words to, to thank uh, the government of Australia, not only for being our uh, both virtual and physical host for today's SAD event, but also for entrusting UNIDIR to, to, to manage the development and the delivery of this very interesting, important and timely project. As you all know, um, UNIDIR is a voluntary funded organization, so everything that we do, all of the activities that we implement are only possible thanks to the generous contributions of our donors. So we're very grateful to uh, Australia for uh, entrusting us with this, with this endeavor. We are a, a few minutes uh, behind schedule, so um, I will try to go relatively quickly on some of the background information because you have already heard uh, most of it from uh, uh, the, the speakers that uh, that preceded me. Um, but uh, just to leave more time to uh, do the actual uh, demonstration and then uh, uh, questions and answers, I'm sure you, you'll have many. But this is just to say by means of introduction that um, this idea of developing the survey uh, and using the survey for multiple uh, purposes is somewhat being permeating the reports of uh, both the UWG and, and the GGE uh, uh, last year. You see on, uh, on the slide, there was this 
this reference to states on voluntary basis to continue to inform the Secretary General, as well as to use the, the model national survey, um, you know, and potentially use it uh, as a way to structure their, their contribution to, uh, uh, to the Secretary General. Uh, next slide, please. The same concept was uh, somewhat uh, um, uh, taken uh, also by, uh, by, by the GG that reiterated uh, this, this idea of, uh, of using the, the survey. Um, and last but not least, uh, in a way, this uh, really helped us, or you know, there was a specific mention to the cyber policy portal. So you would see that uh, um, in the uh, uh, next slide, please, uh, there was really the connection between the idea of the survey, although this connection wasn't made explicit, it became apparent that, uh, you know, if there was the desire by member states to share their uh, uh, results of their of the national survey with, uh, um, with uh, other states to promote transparency and confidence building, then given the other language that was included with the reference to the cyber policy portal, our portal seemed to be the best place to, to host and the survey and to display its result. Um, next slide, please. So this ultimately uh, led to the uh, project that was implemented with the support of Australia to develop uh, one survey with three key uh, purposes. First and foremost, I think the first bullet uh, is probably, from a, from a research perspective, is probably the most uh, the most important one, which is this is really a tool for member states. This is a self-assessment tool that allows all member states to take stock of where they are, uh, where they're starting from, if it's a sort of like a baseline uh, uh, um, uh, process, a baseline assessment process, or to track progress over time. So to see how the, the national implementation of the framework for responsible state behavior is, is progressing over time. And the same survey, as was as was uh, hinted uh, in the language by in, of the reports, can also be used uh, to support member states in in their in the submission of their responses to um, uh, to the SG. However, it should be stressed that submitting the completed survey to UNIDIR does not replace the official submission that member states who are willing to do so should do following the, the proper and official channels to the Secretariat. However, the survey can still offer a, a solid uh, basis uh, and structure. And last but not least, should member states decide to submit the completed survey to UNIDIR for uh, upload on their uh, uh, national profile on the cyber policy portal, then um, from a multilateral perspective, perhaps the most, the most important objective, which is really supporting transparency, information sharing, confidence building, and to some degree, even, even capacity building by means of generating a, a, a library of, of resources and best practices and good practices that um, other countries can, can look upon to kind of inform their own national processes. And next slide, please. The survey, so this is a, a, a mock-up of the CPP's uh, um, uh, front page. Uh, you will hear from another presentation that was supposed to be played this morning during the official session, but I understand it was not. The Cyber Policy Portal is currently uh, undergoing some uh, major uh, updates and enhancements. And uh, so what you will see uh, ultimately may look a little bit different uh, from here, uh, from what you see here. But the reason we included this is just to flag that the national that cyber survey will be accessible through a clearly marked and clearly visible uh, uh, button or shortcut on the front page of the cyber policy portal. Um, next slide, please. And once you connect, this is what the uh, uh, landing page will uh, will look like. I'm not going to go into details now because my colleague Lenka uh, will do so. Uh, next slide, please. But so how can member states use the survey? Well, first of all, it is structure mirroring uh, exactly the same um, kind of uh, uh, parts or, or, or elements of the framework of responsible state behavior. 
starting with international law, then norms, rules and principles, confidence building measures, and uh, capacity building. We invite you, uh, of course, it's, it's a voluntary exercise, so you, you, uh, um, you can uh, uh, complete the survey as, as often as you, as you seem fit, but for this sort of exercise, our previous experience with other types of, uh, of surveys of, of this kind suggests that an annual or maximum every, every four months is a, is a good frequency to capture any possible developments that may happen um, at, uh, at the national level. One very important point before I give the floor to my colleague is that there are no mandatory questions. So uh, you can decide uh, how much or how little you know uh, you want to uh, to respond to the survey. It's really it's really meant for you to support. You can go back to to uh, previous uh, or incomplete versions and submit only when you're ready. It gives you complete and full control over the information that you decide to include and how much of that information you want to make available to uh, to others if any at all and with this uh, short introduction i just uh, uh, give the floor to my colleague glenka who will uh, take you through uh, a live demonstration of the survey thank you Thank you, Giacomo, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all can see my screen now. Uh, so let me briefly show you the survey and its main features. Um, as already mentioned before, the survey will be accessible from the Cyber Policy Portal and via the national cybersurvey.unidir.org. On the home page, you may find the basic information concerning the survey, including the instructions on how to use the self-assessment tool and the background to UN discussions on responsible state behavior. When you click on Start Survey, you see a progress bar that indicates how you are progressing in the completion of the survey. You may also download the empty survey here. This will allow you to work with the survey offline and circulate it with respective agencies and departments. The part one of the survey is dedicated to international law. Browsing the survey, you will be able to unwrap the relevant parts from the OEWG and GG reports. The small information icons you will see next to the various questions provide additional information to the text. There are various types of questions in the survey, such as single select, multiple select, and text boxes for your inputs. Let us look at the first question. Has your government developed national position or positions on the application of international law to the use of ICTs by states? You have an option to choose from yes, in progress, and no. Based on your selection, the survey will lead you to the relevant question uh, while making the relevant questions inaccessible. For instance, we selected in progress. This led us to question 1.3, where you can specify the current status and provide additional information in this editable text box. To move to the next question, you can click on the next button. The second part of the survey is dedicated to norms, rules, and principles for responsible state behavior. You can see that the text of the various norms is always provided for the relevant questions. Here you can see it uh, for the norm A. Consistent with the purposes of the UN, including to maintain international peace and security, states should cooperate in developing and applying measures to increase stability and security in the use of ICTs and to prevent ICT practices that are agreed to be harmful or that may pose threats to international peace and security. Again, you may notice that based on the selection in the first question on the page, has your government taken actions consistent with this norm? We are forwarded to the relevant follow-up question. For example, if you choose option no in question 2.1, you are directly transferred to the question 2.3. 
Here you may identify the challenges which inhibited the implementation of this particular norm. You see listed five potential barriers. However, you may also specify other potential barrier in the last checkbox. When you click on the box, you will be able to um, include detailed information. This applies to all the checkboxes here. The third part of the survey is focused on confidence building measures. By now, you will be familiar with the types and structure of the questions which are in front of you, as they are similar to the previous part. In the first question, you are asked whether your government has taken actions consistent with the confidence building measures recommendations. If that's the case, you will be invited to provide more details in follow-up question 13.2, listing various initiatives. I would like to note that there is a plus button at the end of each section, which will allow you to increase the number of initiatives, which you can include in your submission. I would also like to point out that in the third part of uh, the survey, you may choose to include information concerning relevant points of contact from your government, but you will hear more on this from Giacomo later on during the presentation. The first part of the survey is dedicated to capacity building. Has your government requested, provided, and or received assistance in ICT security or capacity building during the reporting period in relation to any of the recommendations covered by this survey? By selecting yes, you have the option to list various projects related to your capacity building measures. You can um, include more details for requested, received, and provided assistance in ICT security or capacity building. You will be invited to include project title, description, status, lessons learned, and the relevant URL. The same like in the third part of the survey, there is a plus button at the end of each section, which will allow you to increase the number of projects which you can include in your submission. On each page, you may also export the partially completed survey in the form of a PDF. This will allow you to circulate partially completed draft with your colleagues. Lastly, in case you wish to return to your survey later, you can click here. This feature is available at the bottom of every page and it will take you directly to the last page of the survey. Here, you can generate a unique link which enables you to access your survey anytime you want. With this, you also called a glimpse of the last part um, of the survey where you will be able to finalize your submission. And I will pass over to Giacomo for the last part of the presentation. Thank you, uh, Lenka. And um, just a, a couple of final uh, uh, points from, from our side. First of all, um, you will see, as, as Lenka just showed you, in the confidence building measures part of the, of the survey, there is a dedicated question to national point of contact. And we, we wanted to stress exactly and clarify um, how we're collecting that information, um, how we're gonna use it, if you decide to share it with us, and what we, most importantly, what we're not going to do. So let me start by what we are not going to do, which is we were not going to generate a online database of points of contact. So uh, what we are going to do instead is give you the opportunity in the survey to include um, as many and as much detail as you want in, in relation to uh, national points of contact. You can see that there are, uh, you can add more than one and you can specify which type of, na of uh, national point of contact we're talking about. But what's, what's very important for you, it's because we recognize that information and contact information of national points of contact can be, can be sensitive. So the details, of national points of contact will not be automatically included in the survey responses. But you can 
they will be uh, downloadable or saved in a separate PDF that you can decide whether or not to share with Unidir. So in short, there are two scenarios. One scenario is that you would like to share the survey that has all of the details about the national implementation of the framework, but you do not want to share the, the details of the point of contact, in which case you just send us the completed survey and retain for your own internal use the details of the national points of contact, or you share them uh, uh, both with us. Even if you do share it with us, uh, we will not be uploading the details and contact details of national points of contacts on the cyber policy portal. This will be uh, retained uh, by Unidir. We will create our own um, uh, you want internal uh, register um, that will then be circulated. The updated list will be circulated twice a year to all the members of this network of national points of contact. So you can expect to you know, uh, uh, every six months on average to receive from us uh, an updated list containing the information regarding uh, national points of contact. And then whatever communication is initiated after this information is shared, as of course to be, uh, um, you know, it, it's out of the direct responsibility of, of Unidir and should be, you know, uh, proceed on the basis of mutual, uh, mutual consent. But we let me again uh, stress that um, we are not creating a permanently hosted virtual database of national points of contact. Um, but we will be consolidating all of the information offline and circulate an updated list uh, twice a year. Um, next slide, please. When it comes to the service submission, uh, you have already, uh, Lenk already showed you that. Um, you can you can download it for yourself. You can save it and, and return to it later. But or you can choose and you know on the last page you can choose to submit it to um, uh, to Unidir by by email or using the, the the interface that is provided. Now it is important that you understand that by sending us the completed survey, you are acknowledging that that survey will be shared on the cyber policy portal. So we are not um, accepting submissions that we cannot use. I mean, we're grateful for you to share information with us, but it's um, it is you know, the moment you send it to Unidir, it has to be with the understanding that it will be published on on the uh, on the CPP, and there is an actual mandatory tick box for you to acknowledge that. Um, there might be a short delay between the moment that we receive the survey and the moment the survey is uploaded to your national profile, because we need to verify that uh, the sender is, is legitimate. Of course, as uh, these things start to be, um, uh, to become more kind of routine, um, the process will clearly become smoother and smoother, but we only want, to, of course, uh, we only want to uh, upload content that has been verified. Um, so we will do a, a quick check with the uh, permanent mission uh, here in Geneva or with whatever relevant uh, CPP point of contact we have to make sure that the information is legitimate. You can always choose to submit the survey later by email. And very importantly, you can also choose to remove the survey from the CPP um, at any time just by contacting us by email. We are really just one email away. Um, I don't think I have any more slides, just one note on timeline. I mentioned that the, the survey uh, will be accessible through the cyber policy portal that is currently undergoing a major phase of, of uh, redevelopment. We are integrating multiple language interfaces and other functionalities that will really increase the, uh, the uh, user accessibility. Um, the, the CPP, the revamped CPP, including the, the survey will be uh, launched by May 1st. So this is, uh, and of course, we will make sure to have a proper uh, communication strategy uh, around it to make sure you're all informed. Um, and uh, we hope 
uh, over the next over the first few months and and beyond uh, to receive numerous uh, contributions from you um, to to make sure that the portal really uh, includes the most updated information. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. I give the floor back to Moliehi in the room, and I remain at your disposal for any questions. Thank you so much, Giacomo and Lenka, for that. And just a reminder to all those joining us virtually, you can pose your questions in the chat function, and we'll also take questions from the room when we get to the Q&A section. Now, you've all heard about the many benefits of the portal from the UNIDIR team. But now I'll also give an opportunity to a member state. Um, and for that, we'll be joined by Deputy Chief Executive, Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore, Mr. Gaurav Kurt. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, let me first begin by congratulating um, Australia, Mexico, and Unidir on what looks like a, a really thoughtfully designed uh, National Survey of Implementation of the United Nations Recommendations on Responsible Use of ICTs by States in the Context of International Security. But the survey is really an important starting point, and it's an important starting point, hopefully, for deeper conversations within each country, you know, with across all the different agencies, as well as across countries, to look and see what other people are doing and, and how to, to gain value from what other people have shared. Uh, my sense is that the, the questions in the survey should help us as member states uh, take stock assess our priorities, identify gaps in needs and resources uh, in cybersecurity. And I hope that the questions give clarity on the actions that countries will need to take. As you saw on the last slide, uh, Dr. Giacomo shared, uh, the Voluntary National Survey includes asking member states to nominate cyber points of contacts across a variety of categories. Uh, like the other questions, this particular one can actually help support concrete actions that benefit us individually as a country, because then you have clarity who's, who's actually the, the point of contact for that particular issue, but also collectively. Um, but a directory of contacts on its own, I think it's useful as a list, but where it really becomes valuable is if we can turn, convert that passive list into something that becomes an active network, a useful, thriving, living network of individuals, of member states, which can add value to each other. And let me use an, ex an actual example. Uh, in the ASEAN context, uh, Singapore has hosted the ASEAN CERT incident drill. So we've got our member states, they all have CERTs. Uh, and every year for the last 16 years, we've hosted uh, an exercise. Uh, we started with a tabletop exercise, really just phone calls and you know making sure that we know who to contact. Uh, and we've progressed to a fairly sophisticated exercise where we'll all be in our various certs, we will call each other, we'll simulate an incident unfolding, and we'll actually use the points of context to exchange information at the appropriate level, at the appropriate time, and build trust in each other. Um, so we brought together the ASEAN member states as well as our dialogue partners to work together and exercise operational channels, channels of communication and cybersecurity. Uh, it goes without saying that this has really enhanced operational cert to cert coordination. Um, the amount of trust and cooperation that we have been able to get from this type of exercise has been phenomenal. Uh, national certs have built up a habit of cooperation. And when we see something, one of our first instincts is, have we told the other certs? That's uh, almost an instinctive response. So when Log4j happened, when SolarWinds happened, uh, within the first few days of us discovering the incident, our first response was, have we organized a brief to the other certs? Have we shared this information with our points of contact within the ASEAN community? This, uh, needless to say, diffuses tensions, reduces miscalculations in times of crisis, and in times of just cyber incidents, it helps us understand what we're facing. At the first substantive session in December, Singapore proposed a tabletop exercise to operationalize and test the effectiveness of a cyber points of contact directory at the global level. Uh, we'll start small, uh, starting small is just tabletop exercise, the same way we did it for the ASEAN CERT incident drill, getting to know each other really just in terms of who to contact. The survey would be useful as the information collated from the nominated POCs would help us to conduct this tabletop exercise. This also means that there will be a concrete use of the information collated from the survey. I'm not saying that the rest of the survey won't have concrete uses, but this is how we will be making concrete use of the survey. 
Um, and I encourage all of us to support and participate in this survey. Uh, every question is optional, and I know that the cyber points of contacts is also an optional question, but I strongly encourage member states to consider filling it in. It'll serve as a, a confidence building measure, enhancing transparency, building trust, increasing an understanding of one another's capacities, and most importantly, the survey will be the foundation upon which we can build more concrete actions. This tabletop exercise is one such concrete action, but I'm sure as more member states take a look at the valuable information that's collected in there, more such concrete actions will arise. And we look forward to working with Australia, Mexico, Unidir, and all of the member states on this initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, and now I open the Q and A portion of the session, but before, but I will first start by giving the floor to Chris Painter from the Global Forum for Cyber Expertise. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the chair, and also thank you uh, to Australia and Unidir and Mexico and Singapore for that really interesting presentation. I'm going to say two things. One, from my perspective. As an old person who has been around this uh, area a long time, um, I think the survey and the points of contact is critically important. And the points of contact, uh, that's you, you should learn from what's been done in other areas. So there was a group uh, a number of years ago called the Meridian Process uh, that uh, one of the things it created was a handbook uh, of points of contact, you know, policy, law enforcement, certs, etc. And that was incredibly valuable for the reasons that were said by Singapore. It, it encouraged a community, which was useful. The hardest problem with that, though, was keeping it updated. And so I will say that, you know, one challenge for this is making sure you populate that and update that because that's going to make it much more valuable to folks. And exercising, uh, as Singapore mentioned, uh, another another points of contact network is for law enforcement and cybercrime, the 24-7 point of contact network. Obviously, that has to be updated, too. But we ran several tabletop exercises. First question is, does someone even answer the phone? You know, that's the, that's the first part. But then secondly, what can they provide? How can they talk to each other? So I think that's a great, uh, from an outside perspective, I think that's very useful. Wearing my GFC hat, I'd say this is also an incredibly valuable tool for capacity building. We always have already have a strong relationship with Unidir and our various portals are linked. Uh, but I would encourage countries who fill out the survey to share it. You know, if if the if you're trying to make a decision of whether to share it or not, sharing it helps the entire community. And from a capacity building standpoint, it allows us, including the GFC, to try to match those countries who need help and have a better conversation with them about what they need with those countries that might be able to provide help. And so, uh, it, you know, if you can share it, I strongly encourage you to do it. If you even want to share it bilaterally when we're having these discussions, that's great. But sharing it publicly, I think, is valuable to everyone in this room. So thank you. And thank you for the initiative. So much, Chris. Um, and I'm just looking around in the room if we've got any questions um, to either one of our presenters, including Jack Mo and Lenka on the CPP and the survey. OK, Dan. Sorry about that. Uh, well, first, uh, thanks to Australia for hosting us, um, and congrats to, to all of you for bringing this to the finish line. It's it's a great initiative that we've been um, you know supporting from the get go. So kudos to you all. Um, you really need an acronym or something catchier though to fi find a way to say it a bit faster. <laughs> That's right. Um, just one little question, really simple actually. Um, so I've um, coordinated Canada's submissions before. Uh, I remember at the beginning when I started on this about six years ago, it was it was kind of an open thing where, you know, you could answer the length you wanted and then, you know, consulting other departments and agencies, ours ended up being very, very long. And then in the more recent um, format where the UN had, you know, pretty targeted questions, it was actually the opposite, very short. So both pose the challenges um, as the person drafting it. So my very simple question to you is, is there a target length that you're looking to get from states or is it kind of open-ended like it was initially for the UN? Thanks for the for the question. Um, I'm also uh, uh, virtually looking at Lenka, but my understanding from actually today's correspondence with the, with the developers of the survey is that um, there is there are no limits uh, in terms of uh, um, how much information can be um, can be shared. I guess more from a research re researcher kind of hat and, and perspective. Um, because there is the opportunity to include also links 
to original documents and original resources. My personal suggestion would be to avoid copy pasting text that is available in, in open source kind of in, in, uh, documents and include the link instead and perhaps have a synopsis or, or, or a summary in the actual text that can then be more easily shared. But this is only for from a sharing perspective. For internal use, my understanding is that there are no uh, no limits as to very practically how many characters a box can can include, or the formatting of those of those characters. I can just quickly jump in, and uh, we are using Gravity Forms, and uh, today it was confirmed that there are no limits in terms of the number of characters you are using, also the number of initiatives or um, the projects you are adding in the various questions. Thanks, Lenka. Um, and while I wait for questions, I'll just touch on something that Jack Mo mentioned earlier with regards to Unidir's presentation on the Cyber Policy Portal. Um, you may have noticed in the provisional program of work that a presentation was due to have taken place this morning under the sub theme of CBMs. But because we're running a bit late, um, that presentation did not take place. So don't be surprised when the presentation does take place that we refer to this event. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, things worked the other way around. But the purpose of that presentation on the CPP is really to make sure that every single member state understands what you can get from the CPP, what the CPP does, based on the many mentions that we got um, during the first substantive session. We really just wanted to start a conversation with member states on using the cyber policy portal. Um, and a question from Carrie Ann. Can you hear me? Um, you mentioned that the um, points of contact will be updated like every six months. So what I was wondering, given that member states would need to respond to the full questionnaire in order to give you the points of contact, and you are doing it manually, if there will be a mechanism to update them interim in between the six months, because from our experience managing these points of contact, the names change pretty quickly. So we do our call for updates every three months for our CBM's points of contacts. So I was just wondering if the if Unidere, if you're considering to have another mechanism outside of a member state completing the full form in order to give you updates to the points of contacts. Thank you. Yeah, great, great question. Thanks, Karian. I think uh, um, you don't have to complete the full form in order to provide updated information on the points of contact because of that feature that we have implemented that it will be uh it's almost like a a survey within the survey if you want it's it's a separate document that can be um, uh, updated independently uh, but the same applies if there is one new capacity building initiative that countries want to share they don't have to wait until two years have passed to resubmit the entire thing they can do selective updates based on whatever it is the most recent information what we are going to do is um, is the the, the um, request for updates is always open. It's an it's an open call for for updates. What's going to happen every six months? We can put it down to once a quarter if you realize that we are receiving updates at a at a pace that justifies it. But what happens every six months is really us circulating that list among all those that have nominated points of contact. Um, but the, the, the option of updating remains always available. Thanks, Giacomo. And I've got two questions. <laughs> Thank you, Gara. Please take up the floor. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Matthew from uh, the UK. Um, uh, just an observation, really. I'm new to the cyber file, but one of the things uh, I did uh, in my career before was work on the UK's periodic national review to the SDGs. Um, and one of the things that surprised me in that process was when we presented it here at the UN, there was so much interest, which surprised us because it was a very, very, very long uh, report, but also a lot of opportunities for us to do information sharing and to, to build networks outside of it. And so I suppose 
I wonder when we kind of have responses through the portal and through the survey, hopefully there'll be opportunities for us to not only build networks, but, but run events and share uh, learning in person uh, here um, or elsewhere. Can I take another question from Veronique? Thank you. Thank you very much for this very interesting event. Uh, I, I don't have a, a question, but I, I rather have a comment. Uh, I am a very interested from the International Committee of the Red Cross, and I just wanted to to, uh, to say that when you check the box, uh, international law, if you have the reflex uh, to contact the uh, ICRC in your section, if you are uh, developing your national uh, view, on international law and uh, to have a section on international humanitarian law so that it's on a bilateral confidential dialogue with states but also uh, we encourage you to uh, to do regional consultation as, and uh, perhaps as you may remember in, in december for example mexico and estonia uh, said that they did uh, in partnership with the icrc a regional consultation so i encourage you that you do it um, at uh, at regional uh, level, and uh, we will be happy to uh, to support you. And I think that it uh, will also uh, bring uh, good conversation about uh, international humanitarian law. So, just my uh, my Thank comment. You. Thanks. Um, Giacomo, you've got and Lenka two que a question from Matthew and a comment from Veronique. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try to give a first stab. Um, I think that, uh, yes, the information provided on, on the CPP, it is, it is useful as a, a information sharing and, and transparency, but ultimately we hope that it will stimulate exactly those kind of uh, either capacity building programs that were and projects that were mentioned er, earlier by Chris, but also some of the more kind of intellectual and, and, and collective learning exercises that can be run in, in uh, like Matthew was uh, was mentioning, um, and also in, in relation to the uh, international law and, and uh, ICRC, again, if we we can somehow with the information that we are we are providing um, trigger you know uh, other cooperation and other dialogues between the ICRC and member states or among member states themselves, that's absolutely um, a, a key point. One of the questions that I saw in the chat. Um, uh, uh, and it uh, brings up the point of uh, um, other organizations or stakeholders other than member states being able to potentially engage with uh, with the uh, uh, I guess NSI um, uh, National Survey of Implementation. We have one candidate for an acronym, um, but uh, um, so right now the the tool has been developed specifically for member states. This doesn't mean that in the future, if there was uh, an interest, because the cyber policy portal, in addition to national profiles, also includes profiles for uh, um, uh, regional organizations, for example, and other, other stakeholders, if there was uh, an appetite to create uh, uh, an equivalent um, uh, questionnaire or survey for um, uh, other stakeholders, we would definitely be interested in uh, in doing that. However, right now, the way it is formulated, it is really targeting uh, states. Okay. Um, in terms of speaking as a regional body, being a member of the GFCE, those capacity building projects are captured under the civil portal. So I think if we expand the survey at this point to Regional bodies or entities such as ours would end up being a duplication of what the civil portal currently maps for all capacity building efforts across the world. So just to, just to kind of balance the discussion. Thanks for that, Carrie Ann. And I'm going to take one last round of questions, and I've got a question. Thank, thanks so much. Um, I'm Adrian Farrell from the from the, from Ireland. Um, apologies for being late. It's just that window in Dublin when lunchtime in New York is the time you still get the the last people at their desks in Dublin. So apologies. Um, um, 
Gaurav said a lot of what I was going to say, and Chris is always words of wisdom. Keep it updated. <laughs> I mean, so I have the number of times I've, I've fallen at that hurdle. Um, but just two two questions, really. Um, the first one, it's probably more for 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 the people in the room rather rather than uh, uh, um, those those online. Just pr from a from a perspective of of regional bodies like the OAS or ASEAN. Has there been any engagement with the with them in terms of possible take up of this? I mean, um, do we know? Um, you know, I know it's very at a very early stage, and but 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 uh, are we? Uh, do we get a sense that you know? I know Mexico is so strong in the OS that most OS states are going to sign up for this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, or likewise for ASEAN, I presume most EU states will also will also sign up in it. Um, and then the second question is just uh, is just an easy one. Um, and again, apologies, it probably came up earlier. Could could you share the some of the powerpoints and things that we'd like to share this across our wider system? Um, so the uh, I know it might be difficult to share the mock up, but anything you can give to you can give to me will be will be really useful. Thank, thanks so much, and and of course, sorry without goes without saying, um, but I'll say it anyway. Thanks to Australia, Mexico, and all those others, other states involved in in developing this initiative. It's a really really great idea. Thank you. But we also have ASEAN, um, the Singapore Centre, um, and maybe you can say something. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the for the question. Maybe I'll go first because I'm aware um, maybe from Indonesia is also in the room. So I think where the take up is the question, it has to be brought forth at a particular um, ASEAN forum, whether it's formal or informal, so that they are very aware of this. It's not everyone who appears at the OEWG, it's actually those that will be responsible for this. So I think the easiest way for us to draw attention to it is to put it at a focused ASEAN forum, um, maybe give a briefing on it, and then uh, we will encourage our regional level to participate in this level. Yeah. Thank you. I did catch you want to say it. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I'm from Oregon. We have a mechanism for the content for the mentioned to the forum. And through that, Mexico is currently the chair, and USA is the co chair. So we have a mechanism where we have the points of contact, and anything related to this, we're able to put this to the chat. And once the survey is launched, just like you said, get them the like a package that we could share with them to get into the facilities. Um, and even with um, the ASEAN region, we have been in discussions to see how we can actually promote a lot of these initiatives under the UN across regional, right? across the world kind of cases. And those discussions have been very Thanks, Karen. Brioni? Can I, can I react to that as well? Because I think it's a very important question. It's, it's how do we promote the actual uptake of this survey? And I think one of the important things that comes along with the survey is, is not just having access to it online, but also a commitment from uh, Australia and, and hopefully many other countries to really try and provide the capacity building to fill out the survey um, to countries to be able to do this work because it is going to be quite difficult uh, trying to bring together all of the different agencies uh, that have impacts into this survey. So, so we recognise that, that the framework of responsible state behaviour when we go back to our domestic agencies it, it does really impact a whole range of different agencies and, and different providers. So. Um, the idea through regional bodies as well um, that we hope to see in, in this OEWG to recommend, but also um, just as, a, as, a, as an initiative, is to have the ability to help states actually fill out this survey um, and use this survey as a basis for uh, capacity building to then identify the gaps for further capacity building if required. So um, I, I think there is definitely an opportunity there um, to also create uh, the impetus and the ability and the capacity for countries to use this survey. Yeah, just um, again, my experience is that this survey itself could be a capacity building tool, as you said, because sometimes, even happens in the US, not all the agencies have ever talked to each other about these issues. And so having a survey that, that kind of forces them together to answer these questions, I think can be very, very useful. And the last thing I'd say is, I, you know, I don't know how the instructions for the survey will go out to member states, but it would be good if part of the instructions were, although you're in no obligation to put it on the UNIDIR portal, you're strongly encouraged to. <laughs> so much, Chris. And can, can I just um, say something? Because um, I'm, I'm sure Switzerland is part of the OSC, of course, and I'm uh, the actual political point of contact. For Switzerland uh, in the cybersecurity area in the OSCE. Um, so we have a very well-established uh, network of uh, points of contacts in the OSCE. 
uh, political ones and technical ones. And one of my colleagues is a technical point of contact. And I think the survey, one way we can, of course, bring it into the OSCE is in the framework of the informal working group on cybersecurity. We can inform on that and, and show uh, what it is and, and, and encourage uh, member states of the OSCE to use it. On the other hand, the other way around, it could be very useful also for uh, states who are interested in establishing points of contacts and, and also in the framework of the open and working group to learn from the experiences of the OECE. And I know uh, the secretariat of the OECE in the uh, area of cybersecurity is very well um, willing to, to share experiences uh, we made in the OECE with the networks of points of contact. So much for all those inputs. I'm mindful of time. Um, the session will be resuming shortly. So thank you to everyone who made time to come and join us for this event. And on the table for those in the room, we have circulated um, a version of the program with a QR code um, to please share your feedback on this event. And then I would also just like to remind you to bookmark in your calendars the 1st of May. Um, as Giacomo had already said, and have a wonderful afternoon, have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.